left off last time. We are in chapter 13. Um, we're ahead of the course syllabus by at least two class meetings, maybe even three, um, which is a good thing. That'll give us time to review before the midterms and the final. So that extra time, because we're ahead of the course syllabus, is going to be put to good use on reviewing for the second, third midterm and the final exam. Okay, here's where we left off last time. We were looking at this problem, this geometry. This is a right circular cylinder. A1 is the circular bottom. A2 is a circular top, same diameter. The side walls are A3. It's an enclosure. We're given two temperatures, T1, well, we were given three temperatures at that time, uh, T1, T2, and T3, 448, I think that was. Uh, we were told all the surfaces were black, we calculated the emissive power of surface one, two, and three, sigma t one to the fourth. First thing we did though, we found all the, the important view factors. F12, F13, F23. With those, we got the three space resistances. We know that since they were all black surfaces, R1 equal R2 equal R3 equal zero. One minus epsilon over epsilon A. Ig ignore this right now. Ignore below this line. This is a different problem. Okay. And here was the picture. All black surfaces. And we, we solved it for what? Here it is. This is case one. All black surfaces. You could be asked to find Q1, Q2, Q3, Q12, Q13, Q23. Okay, six possible unknowns to solve for. Now, we're gonna take the second one. All black surfaces. but A3 is re-radiating. Re-radiating means the radiation coming in equals the radiation going out. Re-radiating. So the radiation coming in to node three equals the radiation going out. Draw my picture, here it is. Because in this case, I guess, oh yeah, I'm sorry. It's not quite our picture yet. There's still black surfaces. So let's get rid of R1, R2, and R3. Okay, so here's my picture, all black surfaces. Surface three is re-radiating. The radiation that comes in equals the radiation that goes out. It's, you could think of it as being a perfectly insulated on the back side, but we don't call it perfectly insulated like we did in chapter three in conduction. In chapter 13, since it's radiation, we use the word re-radiation. 
It's a re-radiating surface. That's the key word to look for in a problem statement. Okay. Once I see the word re-radiating, I immediately on my sketch put Q3 equals zero. Okay, that's a big clue. We look at the picture, we say, okay, I see what that means. Q13 equal Q32. What comes in by radiation goes out by radiation. All right, got it. Now, redraw this guy. And by redrawing it, we see, oh yeah, I've seen that before in chapter three in conduction. That's a parallel combination of resistances. Yeah, R13, R23. So I'm going to solve for Q1. Two endpoints. EB1 is big, EB2 is small. You can look over there. EB1 minus EB2. This is a parallel combination of resistances. So this multiplied by this combo. But I say, you know what? Looking at that picture, it's pretty obvious that Q1 equals Q2. Okay, good, we got two Qs now, Q1 and Q2. Uh, then I say, I want Q1 too, okay. Take the two endpoints, big minus small, EB1 minus EB2, divided by the resistance in the upper branch, R12. Got it. Um, I want Q13. Big minus small, EB1 minus EB2 divided by the sum of the resistances between my two fingertips. And I say, you know what? From this picture right here, it's pretty apparent that Q13 equal Q32. Okay, got it. What do they give me? They give me the temperature of surface one and the temperature of surface two. Surface three is re-radiating. I'm not given the temperature of surface three. So let's count number of cues we found. One, two, three, four, five cues. Don't count Q3. That's, that's no one, that's a definition. 
A3 is re-radiating. By definition, Q3 is zero. So you didn't solve for Q3. You're given Q3. It's zero. So what else can we solve for? Well, we weren't given the temperature of surface three. We weren't given its temperature. I don't know EB3. I'm not going to erase it up here, but I don't know EB3 since I don't know T3. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to write to get T3. I'm going to write this. Q13 EB1 minus EB3. divided by the sum of the resistances equivalent between my two fingertips, R13. EB1 minus EB3. EB1 minus sigma T3 to the fourth, divided by R13. Put a check mark by everything you know. Q13, I just found it. R13, I know it, it's over there. EB1, I know it. It's over there. Solve for T3. OK, that's how you solve for T3. So over here, what can you solve for in a problem like this? Q1, Q2, 1, 2, 1, 3, 3, 2, and T3. How many unknowns? Six. Five Qs, one temperature. Five Qs, one temperature. Okay, that's case two. Uh huh. So Q1 is the total line of heat that comes out of the surface one. Is Q1 what now? The total line of heat that comes out of the surface one. Minus the surface. Yeah. Here's Q1. It, it comes into node one. It splits. Some goes to two, some goes to three. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, let's continue to make things more difficult. Uh, three. Not all black surfaces, okay. Now non-black surfaces. But Surface A3, we are told, is re-radiating. Okay, so let's see what I have here for that. 0.5, okay. Epsilon 1 equal epsilon 2 equal 0.5. Epsilon 3, 0 0.25. Okay, now each surface has a surface resistance. Here they are, R1, 1 minus epsilon 1 over epsilon 1, A1, there it is. It's the same as R2, same area, same epsilon, and then solve also for R3. So now I have three surface resistances. So now, I change my picture. Okay. Those guys stay the same. This guy isn't. Here's EB1. R1. Q1. J1. Now we have to bring J's in. First time we brought J's in, case one and case two, we didn't need J's. Case three, we do. J2. R2. Q2. EB2. Node three. J3. R3. Q3, EB3.
That's my new picture. Now, do what is said. Surface A3 is re-radiating. Okay, magic word. I say, oh, okay, 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 Q3 is zero. If Q3 is zero, Q13 coming in must equal Q32 going out. Got it. Now my picture changes. Here's my new picture. That's not EB1 anymore. That's J1. Got it. That's not EB2 anymore. That's J2. Okay. That's not EB3 anymore. That's J3. EB3. Q3, zero. So nothing goes out of there. I mean, if you want, I'll, I'll, I'll make it clear. So nothing goes out of there. Don't even confuse yourself by that. Leave it out of there. There's the picture. Looks like chapter three. Almost looks something like this out of chapter three. Conduction heat transfer. Material A, material B, material C, material D. Yeah, looks just like that. Chapter three, what do we call that? Series parallel combination circuit. If it helps you to see the similarity between conduction and radiation network models, that's fine. Good, but be careful. Don't put temperatures on those nodes like chapter three. Put either EBs or Js on those nodes like chapter 13, EBs and Js. Okay, um, just like that, we say, okay, let's do, let's do Q1. Q1 equal, EB1 minus EB2, I know both of them. Look on the right side of the board. I know them, EB1 minus EB2. Divided by the equivalent resistance between my two fingertips, okay, R1 plus. Plus, there it is, series parallel combination of resistances. Then I say, you know what, from that picture up there, it looks like Q1 equal Q2, right? Got it. And they say, okay, I know a Q3 is zero. You don't solve for Q3, it's given. The word re-radiating, it's given. So what can I solve for next? I don't know, I'll try Q12. There's a couple ways to get it. I'm gonna do it this way. Okay, so, yeah, I guess that's gonna be fine, I'll do it. I'll do it that way. You go back to basic electric circuit theory, there's something called the current divider theorem. So if I know the current going into a node and it splits up into parallel branches, I can find out how much splits up between the two branches. Here's how I do it. Um, let's take Q12, Q12. Q12 is equal to the 
heat flow coming into node one times the ratio of resistances. What's the numerator? If I want to find Q12, the numerator is the resistances in the opposite branch, R13 plus R23, divided by the sum of the resistances in both branches. Current divider theorem from circuit theory. If I want to find R13, what comes in? Current Q1. What's the ratio of resistances? If I want to find R13, take the resistance of the opposite branch, R12. Divide it by the sum of the resistances of both branches. Got it. Then I say, from my picture here, it's pretty apparent that Q13 equal Q32. Okay. Got it. So now what have I solved for? Five Qs, Q1, Q2, Q12, Q, Q13, and Q32. Okay. Find Q1, Q2, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3. Got it. You're going to say, well, can I find anything else out in this problem? Well, maybe. A3 was said to be re-radiating, but did the problem give T3? No, it didn't. It didn't give T3. So you can also be asked to find T3. Okay, so to find T3. I'm gonna put that over here, I think. Okay, first step, Q1. EB1 minus J1 divided by R1. Put a check mark by everything you know. I've already found Q1. I know EB1, it's over there. I know R1, it's over there. What am I going to do? Solve for J1. Solve for J1. J1 equal EB1, uh, solve for, yeah. Uh, once I got J1, I'm going to do Q, Q13. Uh, so then, Q13. J1 is big, J3 is small. divided by that resistance, R13, okay. I know Q13, it's right here, I found it. I know Q13. I know J1, I just solved for it. I know R13, okay, solve for J3. Here's my picture. But J3 equal EB3 equals sigma T3 to the fourth. Solve for T3. The key, J3 equal EB3. So there's a trick question. If you go back to your basic circuit theory, you ask somebody, you say, okay, on that picture there, 
give me your best guess for V2. Well, there better be 10, or you should maybe go back and look at that book one more time, okay? If there's no current through there, then the voltages are the same. Here's the rule. If there's no current here, these values must be the same. That's how I know to say that. Okay. So now I add T3 here. And T3. Okay, how many did I find unknowns? Six. 5Q is 1T. 5Q is 1T. Okay, case four. Non black surfaces. Um, all T's and epsilons given. Okay, let's go over there for this problem. 448, I'm given this, T3. I'm given this, given this. No surface resistances, no the space resistances, no the emissive powers. I'm going to find all the Q's. Okay. Um, okay. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. Oh, in electrical circuit terminology, that's a delta circuit. Uh, this is the toughest one of any of the three surface enclosures. I don't attempt to, to solve it from that picture. No, I, I'm not going to try and attempt to do that. I'm going to use what the author here does uh, with the equation 1321. So for each surface in the enclosure, use equation 1321. And I'm going to write this equation out for this problem. Essentially, here's what it says. Well, I'll give you an example for surface one. EB1, J1, J2, J3, Q1, Q12, Q13. R1, R13, R23. By the way, don't, don't, don't worry about, um, and I told you this before, but I'll, I'll just repeat one more time so you don't get confused. Oh, over here. If, if, if you don't like R2, 3, I, I don't care, make that R3, 2. It's the same, reciprocity, A1, F1, 2, equal A2, F2, 1. The order of the subscripts on these space resistances don't matter. Okay, back over here. Now, here's what I write. Okay, 
how do I get Q? I'll, I'll put it this way. Q1 equal Q12 plus Q213. Uh, okay. What's Q1? EB1 minus J1 divided by R1 equal J1 minus J2 divided by R12 plus Q13 is J1 minus J3 divided by R13. Got it. For surface A2, surface A2, here's what I'm going to do. EB2 minus J2, R2, surface 1, R2, 1, Q2, Q2, 1, Q2, 3, R2, 3. Here's what it says. What comes in? Q2. What goes out? Q2 to 1 plus Q2 to 3. Okay, write the equation. EB2 minus J2, R2 equal J2 minus J1 plus J2 minus J3. For surface, a3, I'm not going to go through it again, I've done it twice. EB3 minus J3 over R3 equal J3 minus J1, R13 plus J3 minus J2, R23. Three surfaces, you write three equations, one for each surface. I don't know which way those Q goes, and I don't care right now. Don't try and say, well, I think the Q goes in the other direction. No, don't. When you write surface two, you assume the Q from two goes in and splits up. The math will take care of everything later. Right now, don't try and predict which way the Q's. Don't show arrows on here, it's just confusing. Let it go until you're done solving the mathematics. Put a check mark by everything you know. EB1, R1, R12, R13. EB2, R2, R12, R23. EB3, R3, R13, R23. This equation here, what's unknown? J1, J2, J3. This equation here, what's unknown? J1, J2, J3. This equation here, what's unknown? J1, J2, J3. How many equations are there? Three. How many unknowns? Three. Solve it. I don't care how. Excel, matrix inversion, your TI, the solver function, any way you want, go ahead and solve it. And you solve that then for the three J's. So here, here, and here. Solve for J1, J2, J3. Now all the work's been done. Now I know, I know him, I know him, I know him. I know him, him and him. I know him, I know him, I know him, I know him. I know him, I know him. Look at the great picture. What's left? All the cues, all six cues. Let's take the easy one first. You want Q1? EB1 minus J1. divided by R1. You want Q2? EB2 minus J2 divided by R2. Q3? EB3 minus J3 divided by R3. Q12? Okay, Q12. Here they are. 
J1 minus J2 divided by R12. Q13, J1 minus J3 divided by R13. Q23, J2 minus J3 divided by R23. Some of those guys are going to be negative signs. Negative signs mean, no, it doesn't go from 1 to 2, it goes from 2 to 1. Let's say J2 is 1,000 and J1 is 500. That tells me that it goes from 2 to 1. So you'll find out which way the heat flows once you solve for the J's and put the J's in those equations. If you get a negative Q, it means flip it the other way around for Q. Rather than Q1 to 2, it's really Q2 to 1, if, it, if that was a negative number. Okay, so here we go one more time. What can you be asked to find? Okay, that's it. All the work is done getting the J's. To get the J's, you apply this equation, 1321, to every area node that you've got. Node 1, J1. Node 2, J2. Node 3, J3. Solve, now, in the real world, some surfaces, you might have 100 surfaces in some complex aerospace project. 100 surfaces. You have 100 equations, 100 J's, you know. You're not going to do something. Uh, let's take this room for example. There are six surfaces, plain surface. Front, back, left, right, top, ceiling, floor. Okay. So if you try and do that by the method we used in one, two, and three. Okay, let's draw this first. And each surface in this room had a different temperature, a different emissivity, just like that now. And they were all non-black, no black surfaces. Take surface one. I'm not going to go through all this, but I'll give you the idea what's going on. If I were to draw all those lines on that diagram, it would be totally confusing. Try and solve that by this method here. Oh my gosh, you couldn't even come. Tell me which way Q15 is. I have no idea which way Q15 is. So here's the rule. If you've got more than three surfaces, this is six, that's three. If you've got more than three surfaces, don't even attempt to draw the radiation circuit. It's not gonna help you solve the problem at all. Then how do you solve the problem? You use equation 1321. And for every surface, how many surfaces in that enclosure? A uh, hundred and maybe, a hundred? Hundred equation. Hundred unknown J's, J1, J2, J3, J94, J99, J100. Solve form. Once you get the J's, the Q's are then very simple to get once you get the J's. By the way, what if a surface is re-radiating? Surface 3 is re-radiating. Oh, that's side 0. For a re-radiating surface, all you do is put a 0 there. Put a 0 here. That's okay. Three equations, three unknowns. This equation has J1, J2, J3. That's okay. 
if the surface is re-radiating. What if somebody says, yeah, but I'm, an, I'm not going to give you temperature uh, of 1. No, I'm going to tell you what Q1 is. A thousand watts per square meter. That's okay. All you do is put Q1, okay. All you do here is put Q1 is a thousand. That equation, this will be a thousand. That equation will still have J1, J2, J3 in that equation. So that's how you, it, he says you can use 1322 if you're given Q. You can still use 1321, just put the left hand side equals zero. Re-radiating, surface three, zero. Or put a thousand here for that guy if, if Q1 is given to you. So that's how you tackle re-radiating surfaces or surfaces where you're given either Q1 or Q2 or Q5 or Q6. Put it in the equation. Still stays the same. Okay, so um, we're, we're just going to have three surfaces or less, you know. We're not going to go to, to five or eight surfaces. No, don't worry about that. The homework isn't like that. Any exam won't be more, more difficult than three surfaces maximum, just so you know. Question somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, so can you not say that, if you know the temperatures of all three, can you not say the direction of heat flow just from that? Uh, over here. How do I, uh, yeah, you can get an idea, but it's best if you're, going, if you're going to use these equations, it's best not to guess. You might guess right. How, how do I know him? What if a thousand comes in and ten goes out? Or what if ten comes in and a thousand goes out? I don't know him. Don't even try to figure out him. Write the equations down and find, find J1 and J3 and J2. Now you'll know there'll be 500 going in, 100 going out, 400 going this way. Down, down, but I won't know that till I solve for those J's. Here's, here's, your, here's the deal. You're right, partially. Which is the hottest? That guy. Which way is he going to go? That way. Which is the coldest? That guy. He goes that way, but here's the catcher. Tell me which way that guy goes. You can't tell me until you solve for the J's. That's why it's best to just say, okay, I don't care. I'm going to solve for the J's. I don't even want to think about this. I'm just going to write these three equations down and do the math. The math will tell me what's going on. Okay, any other questions on that? Okay.